Good morning. It's 11 past 7 o'clock at News Radio 710 Keel, 1017 FM. Robert J. Wright and Aaron McCarty way over yonder filling in for the, um, um, for, for Matt Parker. Matt is, is he still in West Virginia, Gary? Do you know, did he give you any hint as, as to what exactly he was going to do on his time off? No. Other than he put on his Facebook page, oh, sweet isolation. I'm going to the far side of the mountain in West Virginia. He and his dad, I don't know if they were going hunting. I don't know if you maybe jump on an elk and garrote it with piano wire. I have no real idea. <laughs> but he'll be back uh, b- b- on Monday. Ms. McCarty, would you take a moment and introduce our 7 o'clock guest? Absolutely. This is State Representative Cedric Glover, former mayor of Shreveport. I appreciate you coming in today. Oh, I'm delighted to be in. Good morning. Hang on, Eddie. Turn on. his there mic on. Yeah, it helps. Is it on? Uh, we're, we're streaming, by the way, on our YouTube channel, I believe. I think I think Watson's got it. Try that. it now. See what's going on. Good morning to both of you. Delighted well, to be you. in. There we go. Okay. I know you have your big boy britches on today. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Always. <laughs> Can't believe she said that. We had a conversation, I know you've probably heard about it or heard it, uh, with Elliot Stonecipher a couple of weeks ago, who had some uh, pretty strong allegations toward you. Um, said that you were the most corrupt mayor since George Dartois, which is pretty well, strong. And I didn't know that George was mayor. Well, since the administration, <laughs> right, exactly. Um, and um, that you have committed crimes. Mm-hmm. Run the bites. You've got them right there. Let me let me let you hear them. I know you've heard them. Let me. Where did they go? They're right here. Hang on just a second. Here's the one about. Uh, well, let's just start from the bottom here. This is uh, this is when Robert and he were. Do to we really know the financial pressure that anybody in the news media is under? And does that explain why people who are known for being very very corrupt, like Cedric Glover, are allowed so much airtime? On Keel. Well, how do you know that Cedric is corrupt? Oh, my gosh, Robert. No, go ahead. I know because I've spent 40 years doing this. It, it was assumed that you're corrupt. It's assumed. Well, gosh, why do, how do you not know that? <laughs> well, at, at least he gets the George Dortois reference from a response that I made to him on Facebook. Uh, before he blocked me from being able to view any of okay. his additional posts uh, where he called me the most corrupt uh, elected official in the history of Freeport. Why do you think he does that? Uh, well, I know specifically why he does that. Uh, and it goes back to uh, April of 2011. And it has to do with uh, the fact that as mayor, I was approached by a real estate developer who wanted to build uh, what's now called the Esplanade subdivision off of Florino Lucas Road. Uh, a man who told me that he had already built one five plus million dollar home uh, and wanted to build several hundred more. Mr. Uh, Larkin? Is uh, that, Tim okay. Larkin, correct. All right. Uh, developer from Bossier as mm-hmm. well as a city council member uh, and said that he was having problems uh, getting a curb cut off of the newly being constructed Florino Lucas expansion uh, and wanted assistance. And so we met with Mr. Larkin, brought in the engineers, uh, and asked the question, well, can this be done? And at the same time, facilitate a potential future route for the extension of Louisiana 3132. Well, after the due diligence was done, the answer to that question was yes. Well, the problem at that point was to convince the folks at the State Department of Transportation of the same. Uh, And because as mayor of the city, I'm obviously interested in growing uh, all areas and regions of the city, inner city, as well as the higher end subdivisions out in Southeast Report and anywhere else for that matter, where somebody wants to make an investment of that type in the city. We went about doing what it is that you do as mayor uh, when you say that a city has declining uh, population, that you're not able to effectively attract people who want to live and invest in this community. You go about doing those things that are appropriate and legal and proper when someone tells you that they want to build several hundred homes valued in the millions uh, to help to grow, expand, and sustain the tax base of the city of Shreveport. Well, I had no idea in the process of initiating that effort uh, that there was history uh, between Mr. Larkin uh, and Jim Elrod uh, in Willis Knighton Hospital that had to do with the initial effort on the part of Willis Knighton to purchase the old Bozier Medical Center. Uh, when that did not go through uh, Bozier politics that I'm not a part of and uh, don't have the full, complete history of, the effort at that point began to go build a hospital up on uh, the north end of Bozier uh, between Benton Road and Airline uh, that happened to be on property that was adjacent, uh, as I understand it, to Oak Alley Subdivision, which is owned by Uh, Larkin and his family, uh, and that there were some issues and problems that developed between Willis Knight and Elrod and the Larkins with regard to that development. Mm -hmm. Well, my one and only meeting 
with Mr. Elrod regarding the development of the Esplanade subdivision was, Mayor, that man does not deserve to build that subdivision <laughs> in the city of Shreveport. This is in reference to Larkin. This is in reference to Larkin. And he wasn't concerned about 3132 at that time. He was just focusing on the, the, the subdivision? Uh, th- there's the conversation that he and I had had to do with the subdivision. Do you have an interest uh, property, or does any of your family have an interest or property in that subdivision? Uh, no, we do not. Not promised any? <laughs> not, not planning to live in that subdivision? No, that those are the machinations and the fantasies of one Elliot Stonecipher, who as a result of this particular set of circumstances from April of 2011, was tasked with coming up with the political strategy to figure out how it is that you derail the development of hundreds of high-quality homes in southeast Shreveport, uh, specifically because of what appears to be some long-standing feud that exists between uh, Elrod uh, and the Larkins. That was not my fight. My duty and responsibility as the former mayor of the city of Shreveport is to safeguard and protect the interests of Shreveport, developing high-end homes in this community in a way that also allows the potential extension of a roadway uh, is something that I have an obligation to do. We did that. Now, you made a reference, pardon me, you made a reference earlier that 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 you were pro-3132, or at least I infer, uh, inferred that, that you were pro-3132 at that point. Well, the, the question of whether or not you extend 3132 uh, is all contingent upon, in my estimation, the future of I-69, and whether or not you ultimately end up connecting that uh, to what many envisioned generations ago as a loop around Shreveport Bossier. Well, hang on, let me, let me with, finish the with, question with, and you can come back. With regard to facilitating traffic to the port, mm-hmm. the widening of Florinoy Lucas to a five-lane road is considered to be more than did adequate to facilitate Did your that. opinion, did your, did your position on 3132 change? My position on 3132 is, is that you do the study. You go through the process as a, pop, uh, as a political leader. As a citizen of the city, I don't want to ever predetermine that there's a need for a three, four, five hundred million dollar infrastructure project when there may not be one. So if the and charge so, and so move forward with the process, which if is the, the stage charge, zero study and then the stage one study, which answers those questions. If the charge were made that the thirty one thirty two extension has not been built to this day because of Cedric Glover, you would say that's complete foolishness because the thirty one thirty two extension has not been built because there's not yet been an established need for a thirty one thirty two extension. In fact, as you go to uh, the finish thirty one thirty two website right now, a Facebook page. Even Elliot Stone Cipher himself now, a great example of defining victory and then declaring it. The whole part of this conversation always was, was around what happens with I-69. Mayor Lowe Walker is the chairman of the I-69 coalition uh, for Louisiana and Texas. Uh, it's always been believed that if you end up connecting uh, the segment of I-69 that would be built across the Red River and that connects from Louisiana 1 back to I-49, that the possibility of connecting or extending 3132 at that point makes sense because at that point what you're doing is extending that roadway down to another interstate quality roadway, which at that point extends eastward across the river into Bossier and gives you that long envisioned loop around Shreveport Bossier. Aaron's eyes are getting big. Let's take a break. We'll come back more with State Representative, former Mayor Cedric Glover, in a moment or two. Fletcher Sports is up next, 19 past 7 o'clock, News Radio 7. 10 Keel and 1017 FM. State Representative and former Mayor Cedric Glover. Let's go with a few rapid fires. Let's see how you do. All right. Uh, you, you, how do you make a living right now? Um, you, you don't make a living on, as a state representative on this salary. Well, actually, I, I'm doing those things that I was doing before I became mayor. Which is? I'm state representative, and I'm going back into the staffing business. Okay. Um, you, your proudest thing you accomplished as mayor? Uh, 2007 to 2015 are the lowest uh, crime rate years in the history of the city of Shreveport. Lowest homicide, lowest violent crime, lowest, lowest total crime. Biggest regret as mayor? Um, I can't say I have any regrets. Uh, my The thing that saddens me is the uh, the loss of the Shreveport 6. So six children had drowned in the Red River um, the evening of August 2nd, 2010. 
didn't get much accomplished with regard to infrastructure, roads, sewer, and all that. Folks are accusing you of that now. Uh, How do you respond? Well, obviously that's <laughs> that's absolutely incorrect. We passed the largest bond proposal in the history. But we of the didn't city. we didn't get the work moving. Oh, we moved, we did substantial portions of that work. We did substantial portions of work out at the Amos uh, water treatment plant with the sewage system, um, with actual streets as well. We just wanted to build more concrete streets as opposed to just doing the asphalt overlay that's being done now, which is why we wanted to leverage the special street revenue funds and to protect them from being. Uh, folded into the general fund, which has happened last year and is about to happen again. Uh, we also passed the 342 and funded the $342 million sewer consent decree program that's currently underway right now. Uh, and so all of those things are happening. The that's barn a, well was left, was, was a bond issue well, was we, passed, but we, nothing was done. We funded that for $1.5 million, knowing that it would take more money to complete completely renovate it, but we also needed a better business plan because that barn well facility cost a half million dollars per year to operate. Okay. Um, you spent a lot of time um, dickering over a couple of things that people have said and have accused you of. Spent a lot of time and a lot of money over the dog fighting over the dog park, the Grigsby, the financial deals. Mm -hmm. Would you change any of that? No, I think it's been established that Calvin Grigsby came in and provided leadership that even Tom Dark acknowledges saved the city from financial ruin. We managed to be able to extricate ourselves from record high debt, put us on a path to be able to pass the largest bond proposal in the history of the city, and at the same time be able to fund uh, the $342 million sewer consent decree program. So I think the work that was done there was exemplary, and at the same time we managed to be able to take some folks uh, who had not ever had a chance to work in the bond area and expose them to how that particular industry works, uh, gave them a chance to be able to prove that they can do it. Now they're in the red book. Now they're folks like Sharika Fields, who actually works for the city at this point, uh, who are now doing things uh, that people from that particular demographic have never had a chance to be able to do uh, in the history of the city. And at the same time that we were fighting over things like doll parks, uh, folks who are here stealing because uh, we do have a problem with corruption in Shreveport and in Louisiana. While we were fighting over the dog park, we had folks who came to town and stole the billion-dollar GM plant. Uh, while we were fighting over dog parks, we had folks who came to town and privatized our Why hospital system. Why didn't you take a, a, a more active leadership role in that uh, with the commission? And be, I, I know it's not in the city. I understand Let that. me add on to that. There are, and I know you know this, you because it. I'm sure people stomp you on the street and say, hey, that there are people in Shreveport and the area who still – who still to this day lay the fact that nothing's happened with Elio in your lap. Well, because it, it, it is always the singular person who leads a community, in this case the mayor, that should get the blame because you also have the opportunity to be able to do something about it. And, in fact, we did just that. We were a part of a group of 30 mayors who helped to put in place the mechanism that created the bankruptcy trust, funded it with $700 million that had the specific task of going to the 89 particular communities across the country that had former GM properties and coming up with the means and the mechanism by which we put those back into commerce. Now, that process was working perfectly until Elliott Laws and Bruce Rasher got to Shreveport and was told by the folks at the Paris Commission that this plant is not inside the city limits of Shreveport and that you need to be dealing with us and not with Cedric Glover. And at that point is when the process moved forward. Why not forward annex it? Because that was a part of the original agreement from the 1970s. We change it. We that change you would it. never end up annexing because GM would have objected to it. Now it's out of GM's hands. Annex well, it. Well, that, that's something that the parish would have to agree to as well. You had so, said, so those types of easy, reflexive responses aren't actually substantial enough to be able to... Was it a thought? Did you have the thought? No, you, you cannot go out and annex someone against their will. And, and certainly during the 30 years that the GM plant was in operation, part of the agreement with General Motors was that the city of Shreveport would provide every city service that you could imagine. You from annex police people out fire, without their will water, all the time for sewer, roads and, and everything else, but do not annex us into the city limits because we do not want to have to come to you guys and ask for tax abatements. That was a part of the original agreement. Mm -hmm. And so by the time we got to a point to where uh, this situation was, was ready to be redeveloped and repositioned, uh, the idea of annexing it is something that the folks at that point in time, the bankruptcy trust would have had to agree to. And obviously they had an agenda that was already lined up with what certain folks on the Paris Commission were already attempting uh, to line up with regard to the Elio project. You had said no regrets as mayor. Do you have regrets that nothing's happened with Elio and do you feel like you did everything you could do and, and more? Well, I, I think that we had everything set up and positioned. Because when you think about the, the, the bankruptcy trust, the racer trust, as it's called, uh, $700 million specifically intended to help address things like the carrying cost 
uh, for uh, plants like the GM Shreveport plant to help deal with issues like uh, brownfield abatement, any of the other environmental issues that may be at work. So you can be in a position to be able to effectively remarket these properties to pr replace the jobs that have been lost. Now, what we have since discovered is that the folks from Elio and the Racer Trust came to town and essentially told, at least according to what we've heard, either you guys go with the Elio. And this is from December 12th of, 2000, of 2012 when the plant was vacated by GM. Between December of 2012 and February of 2013, you go from a due diligence process that says either we're going to give this to Elio or we're going to demolish the plant. In fact, you heard uh, Commission President Matthew Lynn uh, testify at the uh, Commerce Committee hearing that we held here uh, that he was told specifically by Bruce Rasher, either you're going to vote for the Elio or the next time you see me, I will be here with a bulldozer. Those are the types of issues that we ought to really be discussing. Also, some of the other types of issues that we ought to be discussing mm -hmm. are, and one of the reasons as to why folks like Elliot Stone Cipher insist upon attacking me uh, is because of issues involving uh, our local university health hospital. Uh, because you have a group in town, uh, the folks, same folks who started uh, Elliot out behind uh, Louisiana 3132. You've seen the Facebook mm -hmm. posting that I've, I've showed you where he now has declared that the best <laughs> and most feasible route is not to extend Louisiana 3132, but to actually go with what many of us said at that time. And that is there's going to be a, a bridge constructed across the Red River for I-69. Uh, there'll be a segment of I-69 that will go from Louisiana 1 uh, to I-49. At that point, you'll be able to route all of your truck traffic to the port. Uh, through that particular route, and the only extension consideration for 3132 should come by extending it from there to I-69 as a part of a loop system that goes around uh, the city of Shreveport. But going back to the current hospital challenge right now, uh, you've also got uh, the same folks who have been behind Elliott from Louisiana 3132 who want to be able to go in uh, and pick up uh, the market share that University Health currently uh, represents uh, and essentially make us a one hospital town. I have been one of those folks who have stood up uh, against that. Uh, we heard all kinds of, of reasons as to why that was the wrong thing uh, earlier this year, back from the legislative sessions and what have you. Uh, we saw ultimately what prevailed uh, in terms of those circumstances, and we see now what the right, proper, and correct side of that argument actually is. we got to take a break. News Radio 710 Keel, more on the way. 732, Robert J. Wright and Aaron McCarty. Local news is up next right here on Keel. Uh, there were some strong accusations made against you by Elliot Stonecipher a week or two ago calling you a criminal, the most corrupt politician the city's ever known since George Dartois. Um, and I have a couple more questions for you. One would be uh, something uh, we're dealing with. You know with. what the great question would be, why, why is it that uh, Elliot uh, won't, uh, come and actually lodge some of those allegations directly himself. I invited him. I did invite him. You we know made what? We, 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 pardon me. We ran late. Why don't we go to break here early? Okay. We'll come back, and and we don't have Elliot in studio, but you can certainly play the sound bites from our interview with him. Absolutely. And and I know you've got a couple more questions related to that. By the way, the, the full Elliot interview is on our YouTube channel. You can go find it, and if you want to listen to it in case you missed it. Also at 710keel.com. Robert J. Wright and Aaron McCarty at 739. Traffic and weather updates right now. Traffic time is Ruben. 42 at News Radio 710 Keel, 101.7 uh, 101 FM. Robert J. Wright and Aaron McCarty, and in studio for another segment former mayor and state representative Cedric Glover. Okay, we're dealing with a problem right now, Cedric, and um, of a city employees. Haven't had a pay raise in many, many years except for cost of living. Uh, you neglected city workers. Why? Well, you, uh, you, you, you do what you can with the resources that you have. Uh, we were uh, determined not to raise taxes. You know, the, the interesting thing is, is uh, you hear Elliot talk a great deal. Uh, about Shreveport and Cattle Parish having the highest taxes uh, in the state of Louisiana. I, I think the one thing that you have to do to drill down on that information is to look specifically uh, at those dollars that come to the city of Shreveport. And in that regard, in terms of the city of Shreveport's tax load, uh, it's actually pretty low, uh, especially in comparison to other areas. Now, with regard to the school board, with regard to the Parish of Caddo, uh, Sheriff's Office and some others, which is where the vast majority of those property tax millages and what have you go, uh, then you have some, some arguments that, that I think as a community we need to have. Uh, but there's no doubt uh, that the city of Shreveport has been a rather lean operation 
uh, over uh, the last several decades. You've not seen a tax increase of any sort uh, since 2002 uh, when I and Representative Ernest Baylor uh, passed the quarter cent sales tax proposition that the voters approved three times, finally permanently. We had the Mall uh, St. Vincent one during uh, that year, too. Well, that, that's, a, that's a, um, uh, a, a, a sales tax that's property specific so that you end up paying that based upon whether or not you choose to go and shop at Mall St. Vincent. Mm -hmm. Now, I would offer to you, though, that if you want to, to, to see Mall St. Vincent uh, become the next South Park Mall. You build you, the then, interstate then, through then the you, inner city. Then you don't do something like that. Um, because uh, what you need is a means and a mechanism by which you can ensure that the lifespan, the lifetime of Mall St. Vincent ends up being something that is decades into the future uh, and doesn't end up becoming the next South Park Mall. Right. You had made reference to the fact that Shreveport population has declined over the years, and there are many who would well, it say... It declined, it's stagnant. That many would say that the reason that that is because of high taxes, et cetera. You, you don't think that's the case? Well, as I said, if you talk about the city of Shreveport, if we're going to have a tax conversation, then you've got to have a tax conversation not just about the city of Shreveport, but you've got to have a tax conversation that includes the parish, that includes the school board, that includes all of the other taxing entities that comprise all of those sales taxes and millages. That's not just the city of Shreveport. The actual portion of that that comes to the city of Shreveport is actually quite low. Is Cedric Glover overtaxed? Uh, but I think that that right now we have to figure out how to make Shreveport and Cattle Parish a leaner operation. We've got to achieve some operational efficiencies well, what if we do you want cut? to be viable. If you're mayor again, you, you maybe you can't do day camps. This was mentioned by some folks, by Michael Corbin, I think. Maybe you can't do day well, camps. Well, I, I would offer to you things. that part of what we did with regard to our youth activities, our summer youth employment programs, what we did with Parks and Recreation, was just as much of a part of the public safety agenda, the successful public safety agenda of the Glover administration, as adding 68 additional police officers. You don't just fight crime just with police officers, cars, and guns. You fight crime by doing it comprehensively. You fight crime by going up out and helping to clean up your neighborhoods. That's but why sometimes we. Sometimes you that's can't why do we things funded. comprehensively if you don't have the money. Well, then, then you don't have an expectation of being successful. You have to create priorities, and we made decisions, uh, and and we established priorities, uh, and we were successful in giving Shreveport its lowest crime rate from 2007 to 2015, the lowest nine-year stretch in the history of the city. But we, from the, but from we, the, but from we the neglected 70s, from city the 80s, workers, from the say? 40s, and the 50s, and the 60s. Would you say city well, workers were we, neglected we, to, a we, cer to a certain we extent? We did not provide pay raises to city workers. We did provide bonuses. We did things, I think, in a smarter way. If you provide a bonus that gives the individual the benefit of the income and the dollars, but it doesn't end up adding to the burden of being an annual obligation. It doesn't end up complicating the retirement system by increasing the, the retirement payouts and those sorts of things. So when you have limited resources, you have to figure out smart, innovative, effective ways to be able to show your folks that you appreciate them, but at the same time, not put yourself in a bigger fiscal jam and challenge. Do you agree with some who say if you cut taxes and you trim taxes and you cut spending as far that you will then grow the economy and then more money will come in? I, I why, think, why don't I, we look I, at that approach? I don't believe in trickle-down economics. I think that trickle-down economics that started by Ronald Reagan in the 1980s is part of what has killed the middle class in America. Why you have still stagnant wages, why you have a 1% in this country that's getting richer and richer, while you have the middle class and the lower class getting poorer and poorer. I think what you have to have is a balanced burden on all citizens, but you also have to make a commitment to trying to figure out how it is that you ensure that people have access to dollars, because if they have access to dollars, they will spend those dollars. They will consume, and they will help to grow and develop the economy. But if not from if business, where do those dollars come from? If not dollars, from a free enterprise economy well, that I'm, is I'm, I'm unregulated. I'm, I'm actually for a free enterprise economy, but I'm not for a, a completely unregulated uh free enterprise economy. We've never had a completely unregulated free enterprise economy ever in the history uh, of this country. What we do have are instances where folks at the upper levels get benefit of tax breaks and, 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 and what have you, um, assistance from the government and those sorts of things uh, under the guise of helping to create jobs and create opportunity. And oftentimes that happens, but just as much. And I think especially in the last 30 to 40 plus years, you have seen those dollars hoarded offshored 
uh, and essentially <laughs> what we have right now is about to take Got just about a month, minute. And that is someone who doesn't pay their taxes, doesn't help to grow the economy, just, buys Chinese steel. Uh, and just about a minute. Workers. If you were a mayor or when you were mayor, did you give a tax break or cut a deal with anybody uh, with a business who was looking at coming here? Absolutely, we did. Uh, that's how we got Ron Pack uh, to come out and move their headquarters to come to Shreveport. That's how we managed to get uh, Pratt Engineering. Uh, Pratt Industries, rather, to come here, uh, do curbside recycling, and to uh, create their uh, recycling operation. That's how we managed to be able to retain and expand Dr. Reddy's uh, pharmaceuticals manufacturing off of Line Avenue. That's how we managed to be able to uh, expand and retain Slumber J uh, Energy Company here. Are you under investigation by any uh, FBI, any other agency that you know about? Well, now, here's the great thing. Uh, I have spent 20-plus uh, years in elective office. Uh, at this point, I don't know of any grand jury that has been convened or is currently convened. Uh, I didn't meet the Louisiana legislative order until I went back to the state legislature. Uh, and so I don't know if there's anybody else who can say that. I know that people like Elliot Stonecipher enjoy saying those sorts of things, but he won't come in this venue or on Facebook and any other and actually present evidence of that. All I know is this. I spent eight years in the mayor's office, eight years and a month in the mayor's office. You name me because grand juries are public knowledge. Where was that grand jury convened? Where was that investigation? Cedric uh, Where is that proof or that evidence of the corruption that folks like Elliot Stone type talk about all the time? We're, but we're now let's also talk break. about the financial uh, inducements that he talked about as well. Uh, he has Can you hang the on big, one more segment? Absolutely. Okay. 749 is News Radio 710. Kill your AccuWeather.com forecast. Kind of sunny today, but darn cool. High barely above 60. Right now, 52. News Radio 710 Keel. Right now, your money now. You about a, a, an investigation, a possible a criminal investigation. You have heard nothing about anything of that sort, correct? I spent eight years and a month in the Shreveport Mayor's Office. I've now been back in the state legislature for the past year. Prior to that, I spent uh, uh, since November of 1990 in elective office in the city of Shreveport. Uh, there has not been, uh, to my knowledge, uh, any investigation that has led to a grand jury or anything else. I'm sure all elected officials are under investigation, and we should be, because people that you invest with a substantial amount of power and authority who have the ability to be able to translate the public interest into their private gain uh, ought to always be under surveillance, ought to be under investigation, ought to be subject uh, to uh, being held accountable for their actions. And so I welcome that. Uh, and so uh, if there are any, then uh, bring them on. Scale uh, of 1 to 10, as 10 being the greatest mayor of all time, where do you put yourself on that scale? I, that, that's, that's for history to be written uh, at some point, hopefully decades from now. Uh, I'm hoping the good Lord will bless me with, with good health uh, and allow me to, to, to be able to be a part of, of helping to, uh, to serve uh, and potentially lead this community in some capacity uh, for years to come. So I, I don't I, I'll, I'll So allow, you'd run but, for mayor again? Um, I don't think my wife would uh, would be very much interested in that conversation. People so are saying is, you're thinking about it. Are you even thinking about it? No, or you'll get back to uh, me. That, that's, a, that's a conversation to be held at some point way down the road. Right now, I'm in the Louisiana State Legislature. I'm fighting for people like the, the 17, 18 women I met with yesterday uh, who are classified employees uh, at the LSU Health Science Center uh, whose jobs right now uh, are attempted to be taken away uh, by uh, the current leadership over there. Uh, without following the proper process and procedures. I'm trying to fight against uh, the, the, the entity uh, that has the biggest purse strings in the city of Shreveport. So when you hear somebody like Elliot Stonecipher say that I am the source of undue financial influence on the likes of Robert Wright uh, and Aaron McCarty, uh, I laugh at that when I know that what financed his 3132 fantasies came from Jim Elrod and Willis Knighton. We know that part of what's attempting to undermine uh, the efforts of the BRF. You're accusing him of Health. taking financing from Jim Elrod? I know that's who financed the Louisiana 3132 efforts. Okay. Uh, but you're no not, not giving money to Elliot. Oh, I, I have no doubt that that's probably where his money's coming from. I have no doubt that these pronouncements of I'm doing this all in the public interest and I'm just being a good public servant. No, there's too much involved in terms of the cost of the lawyers. Uh, that was for well over a year in 2011 and 2012 where you had a second a recording team that came in and recorded all of the proceedings of the city council, the parish commission, and El Cog, and what have you. Somebody picked up those bills, and it wasn't Elliot Stone. But you said you were pro thirty one thirty two. 
I'm pro the, the possibility of extending 3132 if it makes sense. You don't extend 3132 just simply because you want to have a, a bridge over Florida or Lucas. You extend 3132 because it becomes an integral part of a logical, effective, necessary transportation system for Shreveport and Northwest. So Louisiana. is, in your mind, the, the genesis of this difference of opinion, let's say, that you have with, with Elliot, is it based on the fact that he thinks – Thirty one, thirty two makes sense, and you want to wait and see. I think the whole thirty one, thirty two issue was a ruse to come up with a reason for Jim Elrod to come out and once again pick a fight with Tim Larkin uh, and have Elliot Stone cipher. Uh, and I guess the hope and the expectation was that I would be one that would join in that fight as well, as opposed to it, doing it, the proper thing and helping to build the city of Shreveport. Something that I think was also a big part of the reason why New Quest Corporation came to Southeast Shreveport and has built the new Kroger Marketplace was because of the addition of the additional homes consumers that ended up being within that particular region and area of the city. The kinds of things that you do when you want to grow a Just city. Just about a minute, kids. If the reports I'm receiving are accurate, this is from Elliot this morning, I am now being slandered on Keel, and Keel set that up that up that possibility. For the record, I spent more than three years of my life working for not one penny on the 3132 extension. Uh, that goes on. Anyway. Well, I would invite Elliot to come on and join me here with you guys at Keel. I'll scoot over. Uh, or I'll even go into the uh, the, the the sauna with uh, with, with, with Gary, Gary yeah. if necessary. Yeah. Uh, but uh, and also I ask him to unblock me on Facebook. So all of these uh, things that he says uh, to other folks, it would be nice that the folks that you say them about that you give us a chance to be able to respond. I don't know of any other elected official, uh, and I'm sure there are some who would be willing to come here, spend an hour with you guys, and I'll stay the second hour. Uh, and go to nine with you. In fact, we can go all the way up to Moon Griffon if you'd like to, uh, to continue <laughs> to talk about and discuss these issues because what I want to do uh, is to try and be in a position to do what's best for the growth, development, advancement of Shreveport, Cattle Parish, uh, and Northwest Louisiana. Great. Thank you for being here. Thank you, guys. News Radio 710, Keel 759, coming up at 840. Just a little less than an hour away is Alan Crump, mm-hmm, the bet. new police chief appointed yes. yesterday by, hired yesterday, mm-hmm. promoted. Take, they took the interim turn. It, he's the Ed Orgeron of the SPD. Yeah, maybe he talks like him. Right now, traffic and weather updates. Here's Rapid Ruben. Still keeping an eye on that heavy backed up traffic on I-20 westbound due to two major accidents this morning. And we have some traffic delays over on Greenwood Road near Hearn Avenue. If you have anything to report to us, feel free to dial your Planet Fitness traffic hotline. That's 687-ROAD. 759 News Radio 710 Keel AccuWeather.com. Forecast kind of sunny today, low 60s. It is 53 right now at Keel.